My day started around 6 a.m. when I woke up to watch the sunrise in a dune close to where I was staying. The night before I stayed until around 2 a.m. with the Berbers gazing into the Starks and hearing their jokes and riddles, they use metaphor a lot, especially involving nature in the form of animals and the celestial bodies. In the Sahara, the sun is extremely big and bright and I remember thinking that today was a new dawn for me personally, I had been lost for a while. After that, I went back to sleep for about an hour before having some light breakfast accompanied with Berber tea, which they jokingly call Berber whiskey due to its color. It tastes like a very herbal green tea. It surprised me that they drink hot beverage in such high temperatures, and they do this with every meal. I asked and the Berbers taught me some valuable knowledge about the inner workings of the human body that would come in handy after. There are three main takeaways. First, always drink slowly and in a staggered way. Second, never take off your clothes under the sun. And third, refresh your body by gently pouring water directly over where the heart is and never directly over the head. These three things all relate to having a smooth transition between temperature states within the body as having a shock, such as pouring cold water over your head or drinking very fast, can be too much for your heart and make it stop beating. Going into the desert At around 10, I went out of the camp and into the desert itself. As a recommendation to anyone that wants to do this, you should wait until after 6 or 7 p.m. to drop as then the sun will not be as harsh, plus you will get to experience the night start sky tripping. With me I carried a backpack with two bottles totaling three liters of water. Bring at least four to five please if you do this, earplugs and a notebook. I was wearing very fresh long pants and a shirt with an improvised robe that I kept cool with water tied around my head. I wore UV protection and sunglasses as well. The come up and first stages of the peak. I dropped a 160 UG tab halfway towards the main big dune that I wanted to climb up to and here the heat was building up, but it was still somewhat bearable. I did realize that I had only about two to three hours before the heat would get to over 40 degrees Celsius and my water ran out so the plan was to get back to the camp no later than 2 p.m. and spending the next part of the trip there. The dunes can get very steep so as I started feeling the acid coming up I struggled a lot getting up, having to stop to catch my breath and control my heart every other minute. I mostly used the west side of the dunes to climb as the sun was not hitting them as strongly yet. Here the pattern started to show in the sand and it seemed as if the wind itself was the one that kept them organized and identical all over. At this point, I started listening to music, the Golden Dawn Orchestra EP. The whole album has a huge desert vibe with one song titled Saharan Nights as well. I was still climbing and in some parts, I had to be in all fours and felt the burning sand get into my shoes and on my palms. I pushed through that realizing that this would be the harshest moment of my life from a physical point of view. I have tripped in the extreme cold before and I really wanted to experience the other side of the coin. There was no fear in my mind. I knew that I could survive this if I was careful and followed the Berber's advice. I finally reached the top of the highest dune and from there I could see on one side the Sahara stretching far into the horizon and on the other dunes with the camp far down that direction. I sat looking at the vast expanse of sand and started talking to myself in reflection. There are many things in my life that changed recently and I was still not sure on how I wanted to live from then on. At this point the heat was very harsh, over 36 plus the hot wind. I think this was around midday and the sun was getting very hard to face. After my choices were made in my meditation, I had to write them down to make them firm, so I took out my notebook and wrote a small debrief of the conclusions, just the main points so that I could go over them later. After, I felt liberated, which came with an urge to run, and so I did down the dune into one that was on a lower height level. I was jumping down the dune and my feet were sinking. It felt extremely natural to move that way and I used it to go down the big dune at some points later. The next half hour felt very long. 
I saw the steps of sacred creatures who had walked the land, and I thought that I could follow in their magical path. To do that I made myself small by sitting with my legs crossed and then snapped my fingers as I closed my eyes. I imagined a place that was the polar opposite of where I was and I got transported there, a snowy cave I had tripped in some months ago. I could visualize the lakes and the trees, the insides of the cavern and, most importantly, the bird I met there. I went to that cavern several days in a row, and from the first day a little bird with a red chest had come to visit me each day. It was afraid of me first, but it got within touching distance and stayed there for minutes at a time after it got comfortable. I snapped my fingers again and opened my eyes to find myself back in the desert. I found this incredible, and I did it multiple times, each time increasing the frequency of my snapping until it got to about two seconds in each place. At that point, I saw the bird fly out of the cave, and I realized that that meant that my time there was over. I had to go and stay in the Sahara. I snapped for the last time and opened my eyes. My fight to survive on my way back to camp. My first thought was to drink and then is when I saw that my water was already halfway gone and the temperature was over 40. I had to make my way back. I realized I had walked for a long time and that I was very far from the camp. I did have to make it back before my water ran out and my body gave up due to the extreme heat. I had to also be careful about my heart. I could monitor its BPM with a smartwatch, and every time it went over 160, I stopped until it stabilized. At this point, I started to realize how close to death I was. I had well over an hour and a half to my camp where I could get more water and cool down. I also was spending a lot of water keeping my heart cool from the outside. As the Berbers taught me, this would spread the cold all over the body evenly. At this point, I put music that I knew would get me into the right mindset to make my way back. I was very calm. I had an unbreakable confidence in the success of my journey back. I thought of the countless people throughout the history of mankind who had been in my same situation and made it. I understood the requirements and the process I needed to follow to live, and that kept my brain focused and unafraid. I had made quite a bit of progress when I entered fully into survival mode. I emptied my mind of tangential thoughts and my body acted by itself as my vision was starting to get doubled and my thoughts of basic motor actions confused. I understood that this was accentuated by the acid and that it was a sign of my brain failing to get resources from the rest of the body. I entered into a fever dream kind of state where I lived multiple outcomes of this journey back, including my death and the extradition of my corpse. That would be a dumb way to go. My body could just give up and I would be dead, and the world would be gone, nothing would exist for me anymore, not even myself. I broke out of this state when my last water bottle only had a quarter left. I was closer to the camp, but still in the dunes. Here the worst part started. I realized I was not able to remember which way to go. Once you go down from the big dunes, your eyes cannot see the camp directly, as there are abandoned structures, palm trees, and other encampments that cover your line of sight wherever there is no sand. To this I had the added issue that I didn't want to meet anyone, I was afraid of being found out and the consequences of that so I focused on remembering some distinct characteristic of my camp, which happened to be a sandboard, I remember it being right outside the entrance path when I went out and I knew my entrance was on the east side so I just had to walk until I found it. At this point I had to rationalize water and was drinking less than my body demanded while also keeping some for cooling my heart. I lost myself and entered into another camp and realized that I could not be there and had to leave fast, but I had already made it far into it so I managed to find a way to cross it without going all the way back. I walked and walked, but I saw no sandboard. Had I missed it? Did they take it somewhere? At this point, I decided that no matter the place I found next with people, I would go in and ask for water as I would literally die without it. I was thinking on how to seem reasonable when I found it, the sandboard, just there where I saw it last. I wanted to cry tears of joy, but I couldn't spear more than a couple drops until I had rehydrated. The near-death experience. 
I got in and went directly to my tent. This is a glamping style tent where I wanted to shower and drink. Here I experienced the most heat I have ever felt. I opened the door and it was like a sauna inside. At this point all I thought of was getting water and a cold shower and here the acid started to kick into a higher gear. I got to drink and then I started seeing my body evaporate, white smoke was coming out of me and I was drenched in sweat as well, I started to get scared and got into the shower and the cold water came out what felt like bowling hot. I waited but the water did not get any colder so I could not shower. I used my water to cool myself off but the tent was still killing me. The vasoconstriction that I didn't feel until now made my whole body vibrate and my legs and fingers numb. I was seeing double and sensations from my body were going away from the far end of my extremities towards the center of my chest. There is an AC which was on and I was sitting directly in front of it. This was the only place in the tent where you could stay at, literally. I understood that if I didn't cool off I would die so I sat there, focusing on controlling my breathing. It was so hot my earplugs were burning and drenched in sweat so I took them out and continued without music. I didn't want to alert anyone with trippy music directly from my phone. I was quite paranoid about this. Even with the AC the hot kept building up as the day got even warmer, but I knew that eventually the sun would go down and the tent would cool off a bit. I just had to resist for a couple hours. During this time I had the closest experience with death I have ever had. You know how hard it is to sleep on acid. Well, my mind begged me to do that, but I was sure that if I fell asleep, I would die, so I tried my hardest to keep awake by walking around. This also helped to regain some sensation in my legs, and by focusing on having active thoughts to keep my mind going. At this point, I was very afraid. I felt my body giving up and had the feeling that my heart would give in any minute. I tried to rationalize that the only thing I could do is to focus on my breathing and calm myself. If I were to die, I would, but by relaxing I would decrease the chances of that happening. This helped me lose part of my fear and accept the process of nature. Regardless of my efforts, I reached a point of no return not soon after as I couldn't influence my body that much. There was this 30 minute window where I thought I had reached the end, I was dying. Black was starting to surround my field of vision and I remembered that Huxley died on acid and thought that this would be the way to go for me as well. I didn't want to die but I accepted my death and tried to experience it fully. If it was the last thing I ever live I wanted to take it all in. First I focused on my memories. I closed my eyes and relived everything from my childhood to that moment. I saw the images in my mind quickly one after the other, like when you fast forward a show on Netflix. I focused and stopped on the happiest and more fulfilling memories. I remember crying while seeing them. I cried of happiness because I got to travel back in time and live those once again and I cried of sadness because of all those memories that were still not made and would never be. After I reached the present moment in the tent in my slideshow, I opened my eyes. Remember the smoke coming out of me? Well now this was much more pronounced and all-encompassing, I think my brain was picturing my soul leaving my body, and apparently I think of it not as a unique, contained substance, but more of an essence that is present all over my being. At this point all I could see was the smoke getting lifted up to the top of the tent and the AC still trying its best to keep me alive. I now focused on the loss of sensation and perception, first on the loss of physical connection to my body. It felt kind of like a ketamine high in this way, but not as intense. After I had detached my mind from my body, I was ready to let all thoughts die with the latter, so I lay down with the AC air hitting me right over the head. Here the weirdest part of the trip happened. From what I recall, I have never dreamt on acid before, but this is what this next experience felt like. What I think happened is that I actually fell asleep after blanking my mind. This resulted in a series of dreams that were very vivid. I remember the first dreams being like a dimensional matrix that devoured matter. 
Picture a galaxy that is revolving around a black hole and you see it diagonally, then make the galaxy dark red with black patterns and see it become the universe and fold onto itself, collapsing infinitely into a vortex that is constantly being fed in a slow but massive in magnitude motion, all the matrix was in constant movement converging at the vortex. I saw eyes looking at me on top of the triangles of the black geometry that made up the galaxy, almost as if I had gazed into the matter recycler of the universe and this is where I would go now and become whatever it would turn my consciousness into. I don't remember how this ended or the next related dream sequence, but I do have images of worlds of geometry. One in particular had butterfly-like patterns that also folded onto itself like the dimensional recyclers, so perhaps I created in my mind the recyclers for alternate dimensions. The dream I remember more clearly comes next. I looked ahead. This is in the dream. I was still asleep and saw the inside of a van. I was laying in the back. Next to me there was a guy talking in French to the driver and the guy next to him, and they were all looking at me. They kept talking in a very curious way. It seemed they also laughing and having fun. Should we take him in? He looks pretty weird. Why not? I figured during the dream that I was sleeping in the dream or unconscious and I was seeing the scene from the point of view of my eyes as if they were half open, with my field of vision being restricted to an oval with black filling the void around the edges. I don't know how it ended, but I suppose they did bring me along. Maybe they found me laying on the side of the road. After this dream, I remember waking up and entering this state of dreaming and waking up for a while. This lasted for at least an hour and I cannot recall much from the dreams except from random images, mostly of geometrical patterns. After overcoming death. When I finally woke up I noticed that the hot had subsided a bit and that my body felt mine again. I had survived. I felt a sense of relief, but it wasn't as euphoric as you might think, because I had already accepted my own death, living through it was a happy occurrence, but at the moment it didn't feel like much more than that. I realize how crazy this sounds, and believe me I love living and I am not suicidal, but that is how I felt at the time. I am very happy I survived. After this, I realized what had happened and the acid was coming down so I could think in more grounded terms. I thought of all the people that I would leave unfinished business with if I had died there. At this point, I started an important conversation with someone on text, and we had a two-hour chat which felt amazing and liberating as it led to an important conclusion for both of us. I then chilled in the tent enjoying the patterns covering all of its insides, the carpet, the bed, everything had a very cool geometry even without tripping so I enjoyed the show and the softness of the bedding. End of the trip the rest of the trip consisted of me befriending some cats in the camp, plus a night walk into the desert again, now under the stars and at a very nice temperature. During this walk I reflected on how reckless I had been and that I could have died and just due to sheer luck I didn't. I then made the resolution that the world should be different now that I lived with respect to how it would be if I died. I want to help humanity advance in my own way. I laid down on a dune looking at the stars, this was around 1 a.m., and made a list of four things I want to do in life and I will now start to work towards achieving and maintain all of them, I only have two so far. I then came back to the tent and fell asleep quite quickly as I was mentally and physically exhausted. After Trip Reflections I know that I was very lucky not to die, and before tripping I made a decision that saved my life. I had half a tab more that I decided not to use. I threw it down the drain during my paranoia in the tent after coming back. I honestly think that if I had taken that I would be dead. I have recently increased my drug use a lot, not only of LSD, which I have been doing roughly every two weeks for almost half a year, and this has resulted in changes in the working of my brain. I live inside of my head, which is what probably led to this bright idea. I enjoy my thoughts and the realities that I imagine, but I do understand that I have to compromise to survive in society. The increase in the frequency of my use has pulled me apart from friends as well, and made it harder to care about people and anything that is not going on in my head as much. My resolutions from the trip do require a tampering down which I can hopefully manage. 
It has come to a point where it is hard to tell when I am high sometimes as I feel that when whatever drug I try comes up I am already in that state which makes me question if I did enough of it or if it was bunk or if I feel the effects if these are placebo. I have developed a weird kind of HPPD which I like. For me it manifests in random closed eye visuals that I can project and control and my way of seeing smoothly moving objects has changed. Now it is harder for me to focus on them as I individual entities and my vision fuses them with the space that it has around it, almost as if it everything was part of it. There are also some other manifestations such as occasional patterned visuals on white screens and while that is cool, I do understand that it could get worse and impact my life negatively. The relationship of drugs and me will never end, but I will make sure that it evolves into a more healthy one from now on. What being close to death on acid felt like? Something that I took away as well is how coming close to death felt like on acid. This is something I had been wondering for a while and I had already made the decision long ago that when I died, if I was aware of the fact of it, I would drop a tab and go away tripping. I already explained how I experienced or what I remember of it, but the main takeaway is how natural it felt. The Berbers are very aware of how important smooth transitions are and the dunes are a visual example of that as well. The transition towards what I thought was death was calm and sensical. The states flowed into each other like a river into the sea. No fear was present, no struggle after I accepted my fate. The visions I had of the dimensional recycler felt very natural as well, and I was ready to be processed by it and become something else. I understand that my visions and the ones that people claim to have in near-death experiences are a reflection of their individual understanding of death, but that does not make them any less real. Don't be dumb like me, and please wait for your time to come naturally and peacefully. Drop a tab if you want while laying in your deathbed, but when death comes to you do not fear it as it will embrace you warmly and gently guide you towards eternal rest.